Okay, so on, uh, what day was it? Friday, I think it was. Okay, we started off with some definitions here, yes? I'm going to add a couple to that. You ready? First one I am going to show you is called the midpoint. Ready? The midpoint is a point on a line segment that is equidistant to both endpoints. What do you think equidistant means? Equal distances, exactly. <coughs> so it's a point on a line segment. <coughs> now if you think about what a line segment looks like, <coughs> excuse me, here's an example of line segment AB. Where would you find a point that is equidistant from both endpoint A and endpoint B? In the very middle. So, if I called this point C, that would be called the midpoint. Now, when we are looking at a segment such as that, how do I know? Well, first off, I don't draw very well, and that doesn't look like it's right in the middle based on my artistic abilities. Do you see that? But there is a little symbol that we use when we're using uh, geometry that will tell us whether that is exactly the midpoint or whether it might not be the midpoint. If it's not the midpoint, then these two things are different lengths. Okay? So what they do is they just put a little tick mark through it. And if they put a little line like that, that means every segment that has that little line through it is the same length. Does that make sense? So even if my picture doesn't match up, I try to match it up as best I can, but if it doesn't, those little marks mean that I have two equal length segments because I have a midpoint in the middle. So, so? <clears throat> All right, my next one. A segment bisector. Hmm. Okay, a segment bisector is a line, ray, or segment that divides a segment into two equal parts. So I'll give you a minute to write that and then I'll explain it to you. <coughs> okay, so if I have a segment a, B. A segment bisector is going to cut A, B in half. So it could be a line, it could be a ray, it could be another segment, but it's going to cut A, B in half. So how can I mark that A, B is cut in half? Oh, I thought I put one on that desk. Sorry. Oh, this one's from Friday. You have the other one for today? Yeah. Okay. That one is right. right here. So how can I mark, how do I know that that's going exactly through the middle? How can I mark that so that it's going exactly through the middle? I can put the little line right here and right here saying that this is the same length as this. So what would we, what would that tell us about a segment bisector? What do I know about 
that location right there. If this is equal to this, then that has to be what? It has to be the midpoint. If it's exactly in the middle and the two sides are equal, then that has to be the midpoint. <clears throat> okay. Now we're going to get into something called coordinate geometry. And coordinate geometry simply means it's on a graph. It's on an XY coordinate. And we're going to figure out how do we find the midpoint if I have a line segment graphed on an XY coordinate grid. So, the midpoint formula, you ready? First off, it is an ordered pair, which means your answer is going to be something comma something in parentheses. If you don't put parentheses around it, it is wrong because then it's not a point. It's just two numbers. Okay. Okay, so the, the uh, midpoint formula, as I said, it's an ordered pair. Now let me pull it out. It is, oh, come on. There we go. All right, so it's an ordered pair, so something, comma, something. And here's what you do. You take the x value of one of the endpoints. You add it to the x value of the other endpoint, and you divide it by 2. What's it called when you take two numbers and you divide it by 2? If I take two numbers and I divide it by 2, that's the average of those two numbers, right? or the mean of those two numbers, if you want to think about it that way. And then to get the y value, you take the y value from the first endpoint, add it to the y value of the second endpoint, and divide that by 2. So it's the average x value, comma, the average y value. <coughs> yes. Yes. So you will be given a graph, and it'll, you'll be able to see what the endpoints are. And I'll show you more of that. When we get to today's notes page, there's the midpoint formula for you again. Um, also, we have the distance formula. You ready? You use this to find the distance between two points. Or another way of saying that is you find the length of the segment between those two points. And this one's kind of ugly. You ready? The distance between two points is equal to the difference of the x values squared plus the difference of the y values squared and then all square rooted. So we'll see what that looks like when we actually do a problem. <clears throat> okay. So now that you've got that updated, we only have one more to go on that sheet, don't we? What's the other one we have to do? Do you happen to know what the Pythagorean theorem is? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. You use this in a right triangle. No other kind of triangle, but only a right one. And we're not going to talk about Pythagorean theorem today, but there you have it, and you at least will have been exposed to it a little bit before we go over it. Okay? So now I'm moving on to today's sheet. Yeah? So, a midpoint is, what is a midpoint? Didn't we just define it? A point on a line that is equidistant from both end points.
So here's the midpoint formula that I gave you before. Yeah? And here's an example of what a problem might look like. Now looking at this problem, this would be called line segment RS. What's another way I could name that segment? Line segment SR. Like that. Okay? Either way. Now I can see those coordinates, can't I? What is point R? Negative what? Comma, four, right? And what is point S? One, negative three. So if I can identify those coordinates, I can find the midpoint. <coughs> you ready? I'm going to take both the x values and add them together. doesn't matter which one I do first. So one of the x values is negative 4. What's the other one? 1. And I'm going to divide that by 2. What is negative 4 plus 1? Negative 3 divided by 2. That is the x value of my midpoint. How do I find the y value of the midpoint? Do the same thing with the y's. So one of the y values is 4. The other one is negative 3. And you're going to divide that by 2. What is 4 plus negative 3? 1. So that y value is 1 half. Now if I were to think of this in decimal form, this is negative 1.5 comma 0 0.5. Correct? So let's just look with our eyeballs to see, does it seem like negative 1.5 comma 0 0.5? That's right about there. Does that look like that could be in the middle of the line? Yeah, yeah so I think my answer is pretty reasonable because that does look like it's in the middle. Okay. Kind of sort of make sense? Okay. What if I'm not given a graph, but I am given the endpoints, like in number two here? Can I still find the midpoint? Sure can. Take my x values. One of the x values is negative 40. The other one is 12. And divide it by 2. What's negative 40 plus 12? Come on, people. I'm asking you an addition problem. Negative 40 plus 12. Negative 28. Divided by 2 is what? negative 14. So the midpoint is going to be negative 14 comma something. How do I find the y value? 4 plus 25 and divide that by 2. What is 4 plus 25? 29 divided by 2. Does that divide nicely? No. So let's just see. Can it reduce? No. So I'm just going to call it 29 over Okay, you take a minute and find the midpoint here in number three. What's 25 plus negative 17? 8 over 2 gives me 4. So my midpoint is 4 comma, do you notice how on the midpoint I'm putting the letter M there? That's just to signify that that is the midpoint. And then negative 28 plus 16. What's negative 28 plus 16? Negative 12? Yeah? Over 2 is what? So the midpoint is 4, negative 6. Get the idea there? Okay, now the instructions change a little bit for number four. What do we know here? We know the midpoint and one of the endpoints. So we need to find the other endpoint. So in other words, if the other endpoint, let's say it's xy, is that reasonable to say it's xy? We know it's an x value and a y value. Then I would say that 7 plus x divided by 2 is equal to the x value of the midpoint. Let me say that again. 
this value right here, because this is an endpoint, this 7, plus this, which we don't know, divided by 2 gives negative 6 as the answer. Right? Because the endpoint's usually the answer. I think I can solve this. Can I multiply by 2? That gives me 7 plus x equals negative 12. And then what would I do? Subtract 7. So what does x equal? Negative 19, because negative 12 and negative 7. So the other end point is negative 19 comma something. How do I find the y value of that end point? 8 plus whatever that y value is divided by 2 is equal to what? It's going to equal 1. How do I figure that out? Well, multiply by 2. So that denominator cancels out. You have 8 plus y equals 1 times 2 is 2. If I subtract 8, then what? y equals 2 minus 8, which is negative 6. Okay. You try that on number 5. You can use the back side if you need more space, but you try that on number 5. They give you one endpoint, and they give you the midpoint. See if you can find x and y of the other endpoint. I have this written down correctly, right? The endpoint is 2, 1, and the midpoint is negative 5, 5. And I need to find the other endpoint, which at this point I'm going to call it what? X, Y. So I know that to get this value right here, they took what? 2 and X and divided by 2. And the answer was negative 5. You see how I'm kind of going backwards on that midpoint formula? Okay. So I can multiply by 2. So 2 plus x equals negative 10. Subtract your 2. What's negative 10 minus 2? Negative 12. So that other end point is negative 12 comma something. How do I find that other something? Well, I know that 1 plus whatever y is divided by 2 equals what? 5, because that was the midpoint value. I get 2. 1 plus y is equal to 10. So what does y equal? 9. So negative 12 comma 9 is the other end point. So, so? Okay. Let's go back to the front now. That's the end of midpoint. Okay. Distance formula. The distance is, it's the length of a line segment. Or, like the definition on the other page, it's used to find the distance between two points. So again, I can be given a picture. Here's a picture. And I can identify what those two points are, can't I? What's that one? What's point J? Negative 3, right? One, two. Oh, it's going by twos. Thank you. Two, four, negative 6. Thank you. And then what? Negative 2. And what's K? 2, 4, 6, 6, and 6. Okay. So, given a graph here, I can find its length, starting off by finding those two endpoints, and then we're going to plug it into this formula. Okay. So, this formula has a long square root, so I'm going to start off with that. x2 minus x1. Now, remember when we found slope? That's where we've seen this y2, y1, x2, x1 thing. 
Now, this one is important to make sure that we keep the order correct because subtraction, it matters what order you go in, right? So if it says x2 first and y2 first, I need to pick which point I'm going to be using first. I'm just going to go this one first and then that one second, okay? So underneath here, I have an x value minus an x value. So x value 6 minus x value of negative 6. That's 6 minus negative 6. What does the formula say I do to that? I need to square that. And I'll get to the solving of that part in just a minute. Plus, I have to do the same thing with the y's. Now, if I started with this x value here, I need to start with this y value. So 6 minus negative 2. And again, it says to square it. So I'm going to simplify this one kind of in short little bits. You ready? What is 6 minus negative 6? It becomes plus 6, giving me 12. There's a squared on that 12, right? So I'm going to have to square that in a minute. What about here? 6 minus negative 2 becomes 6 plus 2, which is 8. And I'm going to have to square that. Are we okay so far? Okay. What is 12 squared? 144. What is 8 squared? And what is 144 plus 64? Two oh eight. Yeah? Now, hang on. Um, I can't leave my answer like that. Why can't I leave my answer like that? You have to simplify your square root. Now, stop me if you've never done this before, but the square root of 208, I'm going to go to the back side to simplify it, okay? Square root of 208, here's how I learned to simplify things. You draw a tree. Does this look familiar to you? I know that 208, well, I don't know a whole lot of stuff that multiplies to get it, but I know that 208 is positive, so I know it's 2 times something. I'm sorry, not that it's positive. It's even, so I know it's 2 times something. 2 times what gives me 208? 104. Well, 104 is still even, so I know it's 2 times something, right? 104 divided by 2 is 52. It's still even, isn't it? So I can keep going, dividing by 2. And that's 2 and 13. And 13, I can't go any further, can I? So, why do I have these numbers circled? Because they're prime numbers. That means the only way I could draw a tree off of that or draw branches off of that, one of them would have to have a one. And we don't want any ones in here. So what did I just do? Well, a couple things. Number one, I found the prime factorization. I know that 208 is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 13. Don't believe me? 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 13 is 208. Okay? Now, if this is all under a square root, what is 2 times 2 under a square root? Isn't that 4? Don't I know what the square root of 4 is? What is it? 2. Huh. So 2 twos from my tree here, end up being the square root of 4, which means I can take a 2 out. Yeah? Okay. What about the other two twos? Wouldn't that be another 4? So I can take out another 2. And what's left inside? 13. He's got nobody. So if I have pairs of numbers that are the same on my little tree here, they can come out. So what does this become? 4 radical 13. So I would want to see my answer of the square root of 208. I would want to see that as 4 radical 13. So two different things there. Number one, plugging stuff into the formula. Second part, simplifying your radical. Okay? 
All right. Okay. So here, I'm just going to go ahead and label this one point one and that one point two. Doesn't matter which one's point one and which one's point two. Using that distance formula, I have the long square root, right? So what's the x2? What's the x value from the second point? Negative 2. Again, I should hear 36 people responding to me. That shouldn't be a comma, sorry. Minus, what's the x value from point 1? 5. There we go. Square it. Plus, what's the y value from point 2? Negative 3. Negative 3. Minus the y value from point 1? And I'm going to square that one. So now I'm going to do some simplifying. What is negative 2 minus 5? Negative 7. That's in parentheses when you square it. It is important that you keep it in parentheses. Plus, what's negative 3 minus 0? Square that. So let's see. Negative 7 squared is what? Positive 49 because it's negative 7 times negative 7. And negative 3 squared is? Positive 9. 49 plus 9 is what? 58. So hopefully you were at least able to get to there, right? Okay, so 58 is what I'm going to draw a tree for on the back side. So if I draw my tree for 58, it's even, so I know it can be divided by 2. 2 times what is 58? 29? Can 29 go down any further? It can't, can it? So, I don't have any pairs like I had over here, which means what? I can't simplify it any further. So, radical 58 is as far as it goes. The only way it can go further is if you have these pairs that you can take out. Those twos became that one. Those twos became that one. Okay? If that part confuses you, go onto YouTube and search... Simplifying radicals. You will probably get over 10,000 results to that. All right, the last one here. Again, I'm just going to call one of them point 0.1 and one of them point 0.2. So, starting off, I need the x value from point 0.2. What is that? Negative 9 minus the x value from point 0.1. So, negative 9 minus negative 6. And that's going to be squared, and I've got to keep making my radical bigger there. Plus, what's the y value from point 2? 12 <laughs> minus, what's the y value from point 1? And I'm going to square that. So now I'm actually going to do the subtraction, and then I'll square it. So negative 9 minus negative 6, that's going to become a plus. Gives me negative 3, and that's what I'm squaring. And then over here, 12 minus 8. 12 minus 8, 4, squared, okay, so I have 9 plus 16, what is 9 plus 16? 25, what's the square root of 25? So the distance between those points, or in other words, if I drew a line segment between those two points, the length of that line segment would be five units exactly. Okay? All right, your homework is posted on Google Classroom. Happy studying.